Welcome back to AP Statistics. This is Dr. Clay, not affiliated with the College Board, and we're ready to talk about something called a binomial proportion, which is simply taking a binomial, instead of asking how many successes, we ask what proportion of successes. And it's a good idea to have a reasonably large number for this. Let's say at least 40 trials. So what proportion of successes? So let's say we t we're going to take a batch of 100 free throws. And we have a 60% free throw shooter. And what we're counting is the proportion of successes. So the proportion is equal to x over n. That's the number of successes divided by the number of trials. So if somebody makes 55 out of 100, that would be a proportion of 0.55. And that would be our sample proportion, which I will call p hat. Um, so that's the true p is 60. That's this, the true percentage that person makes, you know, <clears throat> that's sort of given. And 55% might be what they might make in a batch of 100 free throws. And then they take another batch and they might get a different proportion. They might get 62% or whatever. So that's a proportion. The mean of a sample proportion is equal to the mean of one trial, or so, sorry, the mean number of successes, which is NP. Remember, the mean number of successes, X, was NP. But then we divide by N is equal to P. So the mean. If you can bear the notation, the mean of p hat is p. So on average, the sample proportion will be the same as the population proportion. I haven't even talked about this sample versus population yet. That's a separate talk, but we'll, um, we'll just use this notation. Then we have the sigma of this p hat thing is again the true standard deviation but we divide by n because now instead of counting successes we're looking at the proportion of successes we're dividing by n so now we've got if we simplify over square root of n so we have this new uh, the standard deviation of this sample proportion, you know, if we take a new, take a batch of free throws, of let's say 100 free throws, this proportion of successes, the standard deviation of that will be this guy over here, square root of 1 minus p times 1 minus p over square root of n. So it's a little confusing because in this case, the square root of n shows up in the denominator whereas before it was showing up in the numerator and that's because we're now taking a sample proportion and we're dividing by n. Okay, so that's wonderful. And often people will use what's called a normal approximation. That is, they'll say that p hat will be approximately normal, approximately normal with a mu, mu equal to p and sigma equal to square root of p times 1 minus p all over square root of n. So that's our, <coughs> so people will use that and then, if, so if you want to say what is the probability that in a hundred free throws somebody gets 55% or less, we could pr use a norm CDF type of thing. We could take 
minus 0 0.60. That's our, so think of this as kind of an x, and this is kind of a mu. This is kind of a mu. That's kind of an x. 0 0.55 minus 0 0.60 all over um, the square root of uh, 0.6 times 1 minus 0.6 over, and this will actually end up in the numerator if you flip it, but it will be over the square root of 100. That's our n. And so we could, that's, we could use that as a z variable and then do a norm CDF norm CDF from negative 10 to z to get the probability of us getting uh, less than 55% free throws as an approximation. Again, this is an approximation. But note that if you wanted to do this exactly, we would not use the proportion, but use the actual numbers. So what's the probability of... So if, if you're going to get 55% of 100, that means you're going to get 55. And so we could do a binome CDF for 100 trials, 0 0.60 probability, and 55, and that'll give us the probability of getting up to and including 55 made free throws, and that'll give us an exact measure of, uh, of, what the, of the probability. So why do we use this normal approximation sometimes? I think the only case where it becomes interesting is where you're asking a question where you're curious about n. So how many trials, how many free throws do we have to shoot in order to have a less than 2% chance of hitting less than 0.5%. So how many free throws do we have to shoot in order to have less than a 2% chance of hitting less than 0.55. Now there we could use the normal approximation pretty handily to solve that you know, in, in just a couple of easy steps. That is, uh, let's see, we want less than a 2% chance, so we take 0.02, we could take in norm of 0.02, and that'll give us our target for z, and then we take um, 0.55 minus 0.60 over square root of 0.6 times 1 minus 0.6 over square root of n is equal to whatever that target z is, and now we're solving for one variable, the square root of n, and we can solve it. And that's one way to do it. Um, so that's with the normal approximation. So let me say that this is with the normal approximation. With uh, If we want to go back to the solving it using what n uh, using the bi using the binome CDF then we have to do guess and check and maybe I'll show you that in a second okay so here we are we have have it set up with n trials and n is a hundred probability of success is 0.6 and we want to have a low probability that the sample proportion will be 0.55 or less. And so <clears throat> every time we change n, we multiply n by the sample proportion to get our target for k. 
And so <clears throat> and then we use a binome CDF to get the probability that uh, that will get less than or equal to k successes. So when we do 100, the probability is 0.17. That's too high. We want it to be less than 2%. Now it's 18%. So let's try 1,000. Okay, now we're way under, so n of 1,000 will do it. But we're, we're let's see how, let's try to get a little closer to 2%. Let's try something smaller. Let's try 300. Okay, 300 we get 4%, so that's too high, so we have to go above that. Let's try 400. Now we're getting closer. Let's try 450. Uh, that's too low. Let's try 420. And we're getting closer. Let's try 410. Okay, that's very close. That's a little high. Let's try 408. That's a little low. Let's try 409. Okay, so 409, 408. So it's somewhere between 408 and 409. Is that right? Why do I feel like 410 is getting better than 409? Hang on. Well, I think it was giving me, uh, it was rounding some of these numbers to integers. Uh, which was causing a little bit of problem, but I think the the right answer uh, is about 410. So if we set our um, n equal to about 410, then the chances of getting less than 55% fall to, that chance falls to less than 2%. So that, um, so with 410, we satisfy that. So that's doing guess and check. Again, we have the normal approximation as another way of solving it. And in live textbook problems, they would rather have you use the normal approximation method. And I think that's all I'll say about the proportion.